lift your hands everywhere you are. You can never fail. You don't know what it means to fail. Every pain on the earth may fail, but you can never, ever, ever, never fail. Lift up your hands in the worship. we give you the praise. We worship you. Breathe upon this service this morning. The God that cannot fail. The God who does not know what it means to fail. Everything on the earth may fail. But you can never, ever, ever fail. Visit us this morning. Touch somebody. Show someone that you are the unfailing God. Thank you, Master. Lift up your right hand. This is for somebody. And like that woman of the world, 
I was thinking of things that cannot satisfy. And now I hear my Savior speaking. This testing of my soul Till I want no more. Till my cup.
in the name of Jesus. Can you feel his presence? Hands lifted. Awesome. Auspicious presence of Jesus. In Jesus' precious name. Lift your hands high. And just soak in this presence. Let this presence handle your pressure. Lift your hands high. Let it handle pressure. Let it take off pain. Let it bring peace and rest. Lift your hands up. your hands high and whisper the name Jesus. In that day, the burden shall be lifted from off your shoulder and the yoke from off your neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. I declare the destruction of every yoke, the dissolution of every pressure, the lifting of every burden. Receive it now! That burden is lifted. That yoke is broken. It's destroyed. That pressure is over. That pressure is over. That worry is gone. The anxiety, the migraine headache. Go now. Word of heaven. Heal me to the Lord. Oh God. Heal my God. Feel it all and make me whole. Feel my God, feel it all and make me whole. Something just happened, and you know it. His presence is one of our greatest assets. Moses said, if your presence go not with us, don't take us from here. That presence is released around your life today. And that Red Sea will give way as you live here. Give the Lord a praise as you take your seat. I 
don't know why he came. I don't know why he sacrificed his life for that I died. So glad he did. Where would I be? Jesus didn't love me. Where would I be if he didn't come? Where would I be if he hadn't sacrificed his life? Sacrificed his life. and thank you for the blood thank you for the sacrifice of Calvary Chapter 22, verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, Strengthen thy brethren. I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. Subject is keeping faith alive. Keeping faith alive. This morning, we intend to understand the forces that keep faith alive. Faith is such a critical necessity to the child of God. And so it must be kept healthy and kept alive at all times, at all costs. Let me say that again. Faith is so vital to the existence of the child of God. That it must be kept alive, kept healthy at all times, at all costs. It must be prevented from failing because there is something called faith failure. 
I have prayed for you that thy faith fail not. Faith failure. I believe maybe around the same or almost worse than a major organ failure. When faith fails, it is like a major organ in the body failing. It's like heart failure. It's like kidney failure. It's like lung failure. It's like liver or hepatic failure. What happens when faith fails? What is the consequence of faith failure? First, life is in danger with the failure of faith. Life is in danger when faith fails. Because the just shall live by his faith. And I will give you rest. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. So where faith fails, life is at risk. Faith must not fail. Faith must not fail. When faith fails, life is at risk. Also, when faith fails, or rather, victory is never in view when faith fails. Victory can never be in view. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. The meaning of that is defeat is permanent with faith failure. When faith fails, people live, swim, and revel in defeat. So faith must not be allowed to fail. And this is the worst. Third, salvation is at stake. With faith failure. When the faith of a person fails, even his soul's salvation is at stake. Why? Because in Ephesians chapter 2 and in verse 8, the Bible said, For by grace are you saved through faith. We are saved by grace through faith. Hebrews 11, 6 said, But without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder. When faith fails, people cease to believe that there is God. Or that God is real. Faith failure leads to spiritual lethargy. Spiritual lukewarmness. People may begin to go to church only for formality. When faith fails, people become indifferent towards God. Is God real? If he is, why is this and why is that? So faith must not fail. Do you understand that? The reason why our faith must be alive is not just for the, th for, for the getting of things. But for the quality of relationship with God. Having said all of that. What are the forces. That are needed to keep faith alive. I will enumerate. I will look, will look at eight of them. For the sake of time I will look at. Four in this service and four in the next service. Number one. Is the force of light or the force of the force of light? When we talk about the force of light, we are referring to the force of insight in the world, the force of light. Light is relevant for keeping faith alive, keeping faith alive.
Jesus Christ never had any problem believing anything under heaven. Because he did not just have light, he was light. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Light is the food of faith. Is the fuel of faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can say, faith cometh by receiving and receiving by the light of God. It's the same thing. Because the word is light. The reception of light equals the manifestation of faith. Why? How does light affect faith number one light brings understanding and understanding best faith light brings understanding and understanding best faith when the scriptures are opened up to you in light it explodes your understanding of what God is saying. And that understanding explodes your faith. The deeper your understanding, the stronger your faith. We are different levels of faith because we are different levels of what we understand. In Acts chapter 8 verse 30, all the way to verse 37, we saw the story of an Ethiopian eunuch who was reading a passage he did not understand. And Philip saw him and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? He said, How can I understand except somebody lead me? The Bible said, Philip begin, began at the same scripture and exclaimed, Op. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at that same scripture and preached unto him Christ. When the man's understanding exploded, he said to Philip, here is water. What is stopping me from being baptized? Here is water. What is stopping me from being baptized? You jumped, you jumped something. And he said, believest thou? He said, I believe. I believe with all my heart. First of all, he didn't understand. Then light came, he understood. Then faith exploded, I believe. Listen. Depth of light equals strength of faith. The depth of anybody's light is proportional to the strength of their faith. Understanding is in levels, so faith is in levels. And today, in the name that is above every name, somebody's understanding is exploding here. If you are that person, shout the loudest, Amen. I prophesy the spirit of wisdom and revelation, the spirit of understanding in the scripture, that will explode your faith henceforward. Receive it now, in Jesus' name. Light brings understanding. Number two, light dissolves. The darkness of doubt and unbelief. It dissolves the darkness of doubt and unbelief. The light shined in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. You know, light handles everything that is dark. Everything that is dark, including fear that handles hides under the cover of darkness. You know, children are afraid of darkness. He hides under the cover of darkness. Fear and doubt and unbelief all hide under the cover of darkness. You are not sure that whether there is something under the bed. You turn on the light and you can check and then your doubt is cleared. That there is nothing there. Am I communicating? I told you the funny story of um, Jesse Duplantis who went to preach 
in the place. And in those days, they didn't put pastors in hotels. They put pastors in people's houses, ancient time. And they put him in one house where, 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 in the place where he went and there was no light. And in the night around maybe three, 2 a.m. or 1 a.m. he was awoken with a demon that was refusing to go. He bound that devil from night until light shone. Devil, get out! He just moved left and moved right and stayed in the same place. When light came, he then saw that from night till morning, he has been rebuking raincoat. It was not a devil at all. There was no light. It was raincoat. Raincoat that the farmers wore in those days for, for their farm. And the, and the wind blew. And the, and the raincoat would move left and right and remain in the same place. He said, what brought me here today to face this devil today? The only thing that delivered him was the arrival of light. There are things you are afraid of now because of the absence of light. There are doubts you are having around your life now because of the absence of light. There are even prayers you are praying now that are a waste of prayer because of the absence of light. When the light appears, doubt is cleared. When the light appears, unbelief goes. When the light appears, uh, doubt dies, unbelief goes, fear disappears. I prophesy today, that light that will kill your fear is arriving now. If you are saying amen, shout it like a believer. Somebody scream, I receive light. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Light dissolves the darkness of doubt and unbelief. And finally, light brings direction for faith action. When light comes, when the light of scripture opens up to you, direction comes. You know the steps to take the moves to make that will give birth to the results you seek. In Psalm 119 verse 105 he, say, he said thy word is a lamp unto my feet. That is direction. And a light unto my path. Peter said I have toiled all night. I caught nothing. But with this light now that is giving me direction I will launch out the net. You know, revelation determines conviction. Conviction determines action. Action determines manifestation. The light comes as revelation. Imparts you conviction. The conviction fuels direction. And the direction produces the relevant action that will produce the desired outcome. You know what to do. And once you know what to do, you live where you are. And when you take the right steps, you connect the right power. Action is the switch of power. Am I speaking to somebody here at all? I prophesy to somebody here. Power is coming your way in this season. God is opening you up to the right action. You believe that? Shout the loudest. Amen. Is somebody getting something at all? Take your seat. Open my eyes that I may behold wonders out of your word. That was the prayer of David in Psalm 119 verse 18. Ask him to open your eyes. So we have the force of light. Number two is the force of sound. Light may come out of what you read or you saw but the force of sound referring refers to the power of what you hear the power of what you hear the power of what you hear what you hear can either make or break your faith 
what you hear can either build or ruin your faith the force of sound and we are talking about the right sound now to fuel your faith you know what ruined the children of israel why many of them could not enter into the promised land and all of them perished they were hearing the wrong sound when moses sent out the spies to go and spy the land in numbers chapter 13 and in verse 31 the spies brought forth bad report he said but the men that went up with him said we be not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we and they brought up an evil report of the land which they have searched unto the children of israel saying the land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up his inhabitants god forbid can you hear hear what people are telling their neighbor land eats up inhabitants and yet you went there and came back alive and the land did not eat you and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature you know unbelief and exaggeration go hand in hand all the people not some of the people all the people all the people are men of great stature it's not possible and there we saw the giants the sons of anak which come of the giants and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers and so we were in their sight we saw ourselves small go ahead chapter 14 it continues and there and all the congregation this is the outcome of what they had all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried there are things you hear that can make you laugh and others that make you cry and they cried and the people wept that night unbelief spread and they began to murmur against God and murmured against Aaron and murmured against Moses how we wish we had died in the land of Egypt, they began to say. And now God wants us to die here. You know what God said? All of you who have murmured, none of you will enter the promised land except Caleb. I will make you rotate in this wilderness until all of you perish. The children you were born in this wilderness, they will be the one to inherit the promised land. Am I communicating? That is the power of what you hear. The power of sound. Goliath used that power against Israel. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 10 to verse 11, Goliath stood in the front of Israel and, and, and the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. And when Saul and all Israel heard, somebody say heard, when they heard those words of the Philistines, they were dismayed and greatly afraid until david appeared what is in the power of sound listen to three things very quickly one what you hear determines what you can believe and it determines what you fear what you hear determines what you can believe and it determines what you fear. Faith cometh by hearing. Romans chapter 10 verse 8 verse 17 and hearing by the word of God. Also fear cometh by hearing. Deuteronomy chapter 13 verse 11. All Israel shall hear and fear. Deuteronomy 17 13. All Israel shall hear and fear. Listen to this. What you hear can either build your faith or groom your fear. What you hear can either build your faith or groom your fear what is in hearing 
Number two, what you hear transmits the spirit in the sound into your life. It transmits the spirit in the sound. Because every sound has a spirit. The words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. John 6, 63. What you hear transmits into your life the spirit in the sound. If the spirit of God is in that sound, the spirit of God is the spirit of faith. It is transmitted. If the spirit of the devil is in that sound, the spirit of that devil is transmitted. For everyone here who listens to music, please hear that every music carries a sound. There are musics that usher people straight into immorality. There are music that make people kill people. Some heavy metal music. There are music that killers listen to. There are musics that make people commit suicide. They hear something all of a sudden, the spirit of death, bam, descend on them. Every sound has in it a spirit. What was wrong? with the girl with the spirit of definition was not her statement but the spirit inside the statement he said these are the men that bring to us the words of salvation what is wrong with such a talk she was saying that for three days until paul perceived that the statement was right but the spirit was wrong and he was grieved in his heart and cursed that devil out and there was catastrophe the thing may appear 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 innocent appear harmless the lyrics may appear neutral but the spirit behind it may be a spirit from hell a spirit of atheism a spirit of death a spirit of destruction and it damns a lot of souls don't forget. If this is the only thing you heard from here today, don't forget it. Every spirit, every sound has a spirit. And if it is the spirit of God, it transmits to you the spirit of faith. If it is the spirit of the devil, it transmits to you the spirit of destruction. Is God speaking to somebody here at all? What is in hearing that affects your faith? Thirdly, hearing is gateway to understanding you see so and we earlier on said that understanding brings faith so if you if you hear the right thing you get the right understanding and the understanding bets your faith matthew chapter 13 verse 13 it talks about the he said therefore i speak i unto them in parables because they see see not and hearing they hear not and because they hear not neither do they understand they hear not, so they don't understand. If they can hear, they can understand. Charge your spirit with messages such as this. Charge your ears with the positive things and the, and the, and the optimistic things and the scriptural things and revelation things. Please, to keep your faith alive, you must be selective in what you allow into your ears did you hear what i just said to keep your faith alive you must be selective in what you allow into your ears to keep your faith alive you must watch who speaks into your life there are people that crash your vision when you say, this is what I, I'm trusting God to achieve, they bring it all the way down. Who told you that that is achievable? No, 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 no. Not in Nigeria of now. Stop dreaming. Stop daydreaming. Some of them are agents of the devil. And they won't come as agents of the devil. They may come as good friends. But Satan entered them for that moment. Because if Satan can enter Judas, and Jesus can tell Peter, get behind me, Satan. Not get behind me, Peter. Peter became Satan for a moment. Peter became one with Satan for a moment. Right? Be careful. Be selective what you allow. And those of you 
And those of us, let's say those of us who share testimonies and share experiences with people, be, beware of the spirit you are injecting. Huh? Praise the Lord, I have a testimony. God delivered me from armed robbers. God delivered me from kidnappers. You know, have you ever traveled on that road before? This road? Exactly this point. Eh? You, know the, you know that point around that corner there? Where there is one tree. That was when they came from the bush. They were very terrible. We are, if you see the kind of gun they are carrying. What is the use of that information? So that when somebody is passing by that road next time, he will be expecting that there is a possibility. Especially if he came to that spot. One highly ignorant protocol officer of one church did that to me. I, my offense was that I was invited to preach in their church. And he was the one to carry me in his car. And he was refunding me back to the, to the hotel. Low level, it is a, 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 a kind of town that is just a um, ground level Nigerian town. And he was taking me to the hotel. And his wisdom told him, told him to tell me how wicked the town is and how terrible the armed robbers are. He said, in this town, eh, the robbers are terrible. I am a stranger. That is what you want to do. He said, they are, he said the way they operate is like they don't have heart. He said their operation can break somebody's heart. That was the story he was telling me all the way. And then he deposits me at the hotel. And left me there. <laughs> Hotel has no light. They took light in the night. No generator. After you have just told me how terrible the town is. So I have to use my faith to stay awake. And to, and to ward off every of those things he advertised to me. Be careful the seed you sow into people's hearts. Be a messenger of good tidings. Be a child of consolation. Be a Barnabas. And I speaking to somebody here at all. No matter how terrible the situation is, don't make it as terrible as the devil wants it to look. Is God speaking to somebody here? I prophesy to somebody here. Every negative thing in your spirit that has ever corrupted your mindset and thought pattern. Today, by the blood of Jesus, I declare them deleted. In Jesus' name. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. The force of light and the force of sound. My time is almost up and I have two more points. All right, let's go as fast as we can. Number three is the force of mindset. Maybe the force of the right mindset. Mindset it's not just thought. Mindset is settled thinking. You know, set, the way concrete sets. Where a person is set in their thought. It is established opinion. Concluded thought thinking. Which most of the times is contrary to possibility. Mindset. That was the kind of thing that happened to the children of Israel. They remained in captivity until they could not grasp the possibility of liberty. They were, they were slaves that fell in love with their chains. The chains on their leg transferred to their mind. You know the circus elephant that they're using 
in India, circus elephant. When they, when they catch the elephant, they tie chain on his leg, rope. The ICT, that's right. They tie rope on his leg. And so he, he, he moves around in a cycle within a perimeter. By the time he wants to get out of that cycle, the rope pulls it back. And it remains like that for a long time. And people come to, 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 to view the elephant. After a while, a long time, they remove the rope from the leg. But the elephant does not attempt to move out anymore. The rope that tied his leg left the leg and tied his brain. And it is established in his mind that this perimeter is where you belong. You cannot move out of here. Nobody is holding it anymore. Nobody is stopping it anymore. But he cannot go out of that cycle. Because it has a settled mind. The mind settled it in that realm. The opinion is accepted. I can't move out of here. Am I communicating at all? There are many people whose minds are settled. That was what happened to the Shunammite woman. Until Elisha changed her mind. After she showed kindness to Elisha. Elisha said, what can we do for you? What can I do? She said, nothing. Meanwhile, she has no child. She accepted barrenness as final destination. But one thing you must know is that your present location is not your final destination. The devil wants to make you believe and wants to make you think that where you are now is where you will die. But that devil is a bastard liar. Somebody shout the loudest, amen. Say after me, my present location, louder, my present location is not my final destination. Say, I refuse that lie of the devil. In the name of Jesus. Take your seat. The children of Israel, they doubted God permanently. Because the mindset, their mind was settled in captivity. Where if you need your faith to be alive, you need a positive mindset. That was what happened to Peter at the lake of Ga the lake of Gennesaret. Master, I have toiled all night. I have taken nothing. My profession shows me that if that is the case, there is no fish here. But at your word, I will try again. And he tried. He enclosed a great multitude of fishes and the net break. I want somebody here to change your mind. From your family, they say nobody good can come out. No, nothing good. Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? They are telling you, no, a woman cannot achieve this. No, uh, people from, of your color cannot achieve this. No, you are in a strange land. But Daniel was in a strange land and became a prime minister in that strange land. Is God speaking? Joseph was in a strange land. Queen Esther was in a strange land and became principal people in that strange land. Beloved brothers and sisters, there is no limit of time, space, and matter if it is with God. If it is Jehovah God you are dealing with, he can never be limited in time. He can never be limited in space. So you cannot limit him. So how much time it takes for him to achieve a thing. Or the particular location where something must happen. Or that there is a material barrier. I speak to somebody here today. There is something shifting in your life. Something changing in your life. There is something changing in your life. And I decree Every negative limiting mindset is collapsed now. In the name of Jesus. Take, a, take note of three things about mindset or mentality. Number one, mentality sets the limit on destiny. As he thinketh in his heart, so, he, so, he, so is he. So if your mind says so, it is so. 
if your mind said this is where you will remain and you agree that is where you remain mentality sets the limit on destiny second mentality determines possibility again as he thinketh in his heart so is he blessed is he that believed luke chapter 1 verse 45 for there shall be a performance mentality determines possibility mentality affects possibility and finally mentality is the determinant of reality things are real twice this structure was first real in the mind then it became real on the earth things are created twice the architect has it in his mind then he puts it on paper then engineers structural engineers me mechanical and electrical engineers and, and 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 all the team bring it into the physical and all truths are parallel as it is in the physical so it is in the spirit change your mind become different from what is limiting people in your community i have never felt inferior anywhere in the world in the group of anybody any 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 group of people around the world and Archbishop Benson in the house of blessed memory. <laughs> he was very, very aggressive in that realm. He traveled around the whole world. And everywhere he, he was, he never, he never planned to change his, the way he talked. You people, are you hearing me? The way he will talk to Nigeria. You people, you white people. We believe God more than you people. He's talking to them. Sir. Because you have all the things you think, our own faith is very wrong. <laughs> this, I had a funny story where they were seated in a, in a restaurant somewhere, and um, a, 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 a Caucasian person and himself, and they were eating, and he was chewing bone. And the, the man said, ah, you eat bone like that? It is um, dogs in our place that uh, deal with bone like that. And then he looked at the man eating salad. I said, you eat grass like that? It is goat in our place that eat grass. <laughs> one, 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 one. <laughs> that, that you are black does not mean you must be at the back. Being black does not mean being at the back, and black does not mean lack, and to be white does not mean to be right. Anybody can be right under any circumstance. Is somebody here? Shout the loudest, say amen. The point of the matter is whatever color you are, the most important color is the color of God. If you, it doesn't matter where you have come from in the world. If you don't know God, you are at the back. And it doesn't matter what your root is. If you know God, you know too much. Somebody say amen. Take your seat and let me round off this Sunday morning convention. Place your right hand on your forehead and say, mind, change, be correct. No! You know, mad people are not counted in, in censuses. No, 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 you don't, you don't need to. Okay, you know, when they are counting people, so just leave them alone and pass. They can't vote, they can't be voted for. They are not employable. They are not electable. They are not selectable. Why? Their mind is wrong. So everything is not working. Am I communicating at all? And why that extreme example? Your mindset sets your destiny. And you must set and reset your mind with scripture. So that destiny can happen and be correct. Anyway.
everywhere. Any human being can reach in, in this world. I will reach. Anything that is possible under God will be possible with my life. You change your mind positively. If I am not there yet, it, does, it doesn't mean I will never be there. I am just on the journey. I am just in motion. I am a project in progress. You are always there to help. Lord, I'm your project in progress. Do you remember that? A project in progress. Take your seat. That is a force of light, the force of sound, the force of mindset, and finally, the force of the spirit. The force of the spirit. The force of the spirit. The spirit of God is the spirit of faith. We also having the same spirit of faith. We have believed and therefore we have spoken. The spirit of God is the spirit of faith. The spirit of God is also the spirit of boldness and audacity. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 6 and 7, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 6 and 7 says, Wherefore, I put you in remembrance that you stir up the gift of God which is in you by the putting on of my hands. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Jesus Christ had the spirit without measure. So he had audacity beyond words. Did you hear what I just said? Jesus had the spirit without measure. He, so he had audacity beyond words. Paul the apostle said, I speak in tongues more than you all. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 18. The same Paul the apostle said, I know him whom I have believed and I am persuaded. I have a persuasion. I have a persuasion. I, I, I dwell in the realm of faith with positive persuasion. This will be Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 12. I know him whom I have believed and I am persuaded. When you are a man of the spirit, you are a man of faith. When you are a woman of the spirit, you are a woman of faith. Quickly. How does the spirit of God help your faith? Number one. The spirit, the Holy Spirit, illuminates scriptures and ushers the saint into depths of light. He illuminates scriptures. He, 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 he throws light on the, on the word. While you are reading the word, he throws light on the word. And then that pushes you to depths of light that will fuel the strength of your faith. God has revealed them to us by the spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 and verse 10. God reveals by his spirit. The Holy Spirit ushers us. Illuminates the scriptures and ushers us into depths of light and insight. When you take up the scripture and you barata kajika lagaratiso, zerote kevrigada malakarateko jagalagash, le parata soko bagadagalia, le kwashatu akatu aparote kebida galuta farata katika lakatosa, jalash. You are like breaking the scripture into atoms and molecules and neutrons and electrons and protons. Just dissolve, dissipate, disintegrate and, and just digest. Break it down to eatable, edible, swallowable, absorbable bits and pieces. Is God speaking to somebody here at all? And then when you move, you move very rugged. People will be wondering. It's not possible to be a spirit-filled man and be doubt-filled. No. The spirit of God is the spirit of faith. What does the Holy Spirit do for you? Secondly, the Holy Spirit uses the scripture to construct faith in the heart of the child of God. He uses scripture as building blocks to construct faith. 
Construct faith. The Bible said, Jude verse 20, but you beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, you are constructing faith. Huh? The Holy Ghost is the chief construction engineer. Chief faith construction engineer. Finally, the Holy Spirit makes both God and his word believable. The Holy Spirit makes God believable. He makes his word believable. His assignment is to make you see that God can be believed. God can be trusted. God, first of all, he spreads abroad the love of God in your heart. He makes you love God. He makes you love his word. Romans chapter 5 verse 5. He said the love of God is shed abroad. And hope maketh not ashamed. Because the love of God is shed abroad. The love of God saturates, infiltrates, and emates and body. Irrigates, percolates our hearts by the Holy Ghost that we have. You have a heart that is irrigated by love. And love believeth all things. First Corinthians chapter 13 verse 7. It makes you to love God. It makes you to love the world. And that love makes it easy to believe God. You don't doubt or suspect whom you love. Love erases suspicion. Love erases doubt. You believe him. That is the assignment of the Holy Ghost. And so brothers and sisters, if you combine the force of light and the force of sound and the force of the positive or the right mindset and the force of the spirit it will help keep your faith alive in the second service i will deal with the force of picture and the force of thought separate from the mindset and the force of testimony and the force of the right company. Who you work with can determine the strength of your faith. Your best friend can be a doubter and you are faith filled. Impossible. Stand up on your feet. Somebody receive something today, say amen. Now, those who have not come in by now, should please wait outside um, until we step in so that th 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 there is no confusion with the communion. All right. Lift up your hands now, everyone, and give the Lord the praise and give him the honor for what you have received. Now, before you do that, has somebody received something at all this morning? Will you give El Shaddai a clap and a shout of victory? That is not enough. That is not enough. Clap your hands, all ye people. Shout to the Lord with the voice of trial. Lift your hands and lift your voice. Appreciate it for what you have received this morning. Appreciate it for what you have received. The meal of the world this morning. Edible, nutritious, impactful world this morning. Appreciate him, honor him, adore him. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. Thank you for sending me this forceful word, this forcible word, this edible word, this exciting word, this interesting word, this, 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 this un 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 unbelievable word. Lift your hands and voice and thank him 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 and thank him. And thank him. Leparoa sakadagalaya na yala hashta. Leparana ya 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 ya. Leperete setore ne managaya la yala la hashta. Akose perota kazada la yada balabara yada la. Father, we give you the praise. Father, we give you the adoration. In Jesus' name, lift your voice and pray with fire. They say, Father, open my eyes to see light. Out of scripture, 
open my ears to hear the right thing. Say it again. Say, Father, open my eyes to see light out of Scripture. Open my ears. Open my ears to hear the right sound. Father, help me with a change of mindset in the name of Jesus. Father, give me an overflow of the Holy Spirit in my life for a change of story. An overflow. For a change of story, open your mouth and speak to God. Precious name, lift your hands and say, Father, Father, I've come before you today. I receive the grace to shift to another level in faith on the basis of your word. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. While we are in that mood, everyone here today in need of surrender to Jesus, that's your sins must be forgiven. You want today to mark a new day for you. You want Jesus to be Lord over your life. As we sing, Lord, I give you my heart and my soul. Pick your Bibles and your bags from the Grand Frog Galleries and everywhere you are and come forward here. Now, the Bible said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. And if you want your faith to come alive, Christianity is called the faith. You see, it says also, the wicked flee when no man pursues, but the righteous are bold like lions. Righteousness, uprightness, increase your forcefulness. Increase your boldness and audacity. Anywhere you are, you are in need of surrender to Jesus. You want your sins forgiven. Pick your Bibles and your bags and quickly be the first to come. Don't be the, the last to come. Rush forward and run forward as I give you the count of seven. One, Lord, the rest of us can take your sin. Two, give three. Keep coming, keep coming. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. We do it again. One. bound by an addiction a tobacco addiction alcohol addiction india hemp addiction immoral addiction pornographic addiction lesbian addiction anything that has tied down your life come out of it pick your bibles and pick your bags now and rush forward right now and make your ways right to god go ahead quickly i give you another count of seven one your right hand on your chest every one of you and leave the other hand up
Those coming quickly come forward, join us. Say, and those praying, say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it louder, Lord Jesus. I come before you today to surrender my life to you. Today I have decided to follow you, Lord. No turning back. From today, forward ever, backward never. Help me to live for you, Lord. Help me to do your will. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. I now pray for you. I declare the hold of the enemy broken. Grace to live for God be released upon you now. And I call it done. In Jesus' name. You will hold on one minute. Our officers, counselors, take your seat one minute. Counselors, sit down one minute. Our officers will soon walk with you. There's no space on the ground here now, so they will go with you shortly to the, where you are to be received. But before we do that, um, I want you to know that this is the greatest decision anybody can take in life to live for God, to have your sins forgiven, to have Jesus as Lord over your life. And so I'd like you to mean this decision from the depth of your heart. Let your prayer life as it will be instructed you by our officers in the church. The counselors will instruct you on what to do, how to pray, how to study the Bible, how to avoid friends that will take you to hell, and how to be a genuine Christian. Please listen to them, and it will help you in the name of Jesus. They will also assist you to be established in foundation and discipleship class. Listen to them, and it will help you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Right, everybody stretch your two hands in front of you. Father, I pray for every hand here today. And I ask for harvest from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Everything that is yours, everything that pertains to you, everything that belongs to you, from the north, south, east, and west, I declare them released right now. Systems are put under pressure to lose their sleep and their peace and their rest until what is yours enters your hands. I call it done in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Say a louder amen. amen. Go ahead and pick up your offerings, your tithes, pledges, and let us honor God with. Um, once we get to the communion side and they pick their communion, then you will go with them. All right, quickly do that. One Now, Father, multiply harvest back to every giver. Let the hands lifted never drop to beg or to borrow forever in Jesus' precious name. Pass it on. Get these announcements out of the way and then